TV. You can catch me on YouTube at youtube.com slash day9tv. And if you want to subscribe to all of those, the numbers rise in my eagles. <laughs> and we want that to be very large. <laughs> Indeed. Now, also, you have been on State of the Game podcast, the best StarCraft II podcast out there. We did record an episode in preparation for MLG Raleigh with Noni, a.k.a. Tyler, a.k.a. Noni. Uh, and we did have, who else was on there? We had QXC. We had Kanigat from Team Liquid. Oh, yeah. Whose That's name sometimes I, I, I randomly pronounce Kanigat because I've seen Monty Python, and everyone just calls me really weird for seeing that movie. Have you ever seen that? No. You know, I actually don't watch anything British because I don't want to end up, you know, using those, those abbreviations. <laughs> I was building a Kelosi Rax. That's what happened with when I was casting with Diapolo, man. He's like, oh, oh, he's, he's bunkering him in well good. You know, I was like... <laughs> I don't know if he talks like that at all. I, I don't think I ever heard him say anything like that last mm, week. That may be true. Maybe but, um, true, maybe true. But yeah, definitely go check out State of the Game podcast. You can find that on teamliquid.net. And uh, yeah, that was a two hour and 30 minute episode. Jeez, without me? That's unbelievable. I, I thought I was the king of not ever stopping talking no matter what. I know. As it was coincidentally, <laughs> as it turns out. <laughs> it so they pay me the big bucks. <laughs> that is definitely the longest podcast. We've been podcasting uh, for about two Wait, years what, now. What caused so the two long. and a half? Was there like some sort of debate where, where people... Well, actually, yeah, let's continue the debate right now. You know, we were talking uh -oh. about... This is one of the things that you were... Uh, oh, oh. No, no this, th th we're not going to talk about... Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> what is it? Tell uh, me. We're not going to talk out. about the ZVT imbalances, quote-unquote, that are out there. We're going to talk about... You were actually the person who kind of started this whole debate uh -oh. way back when in one of the older podcasts. You were talking about how you feel that maps are too small yeah. right now. Yeah, <laughs> I agree with me still. Because here's the thing about um, the, the, the maps is that in general they're a little bit crunched. Right. Well, actually... Let's back up, okay? Because we're still <laughs> setting up. Is that um, in StarCraft One, a lot of what made matchups interesting is something that I would call controlling space. It's kind of like, um, again, to make these analogies back to chess for any of you who aren't big, you know, StarCraft players and big chess players. Yeah, if you don't play chess, none of this is going to make any <laughs> sense. But I mean, the idea of like in chess, how you have a, a you have a lot of pieces that can all attack one square. They all threaten that one square. Right. So that suddenly becomes something you kind of have to steer clear of. So you can either try to butt up right against it, or you can kind of have to work around, attack on the other sides. In StarCraft, think of planting a bunch of spider mines in a very small alley. You can't exactly walk through that. It suddenly constricts where you can wander about the map. Or the lurkers. How often have you seen a Zerg player take an expansion on a high ground and just plant three or four lurkers on a ramp and he is impenetrable, he has controlled that space on the map beautifully. And uh, Scourge for air, tanks that can shut down chokes, Reavers do huge amounts of damage in tight spaces, Storm with Templar. In, in, in StarCraft II there aren't nearly as many um, situations where it feels like space is really being controlled. Like Marines and Marauders, they, yeah, they can move around and do all sorts of fancy jazz, but it's never like, oh, there are three Marauders on the ramp. I guess I can't ever get up there. Yeah. Sentries are a good example. Why don't more Protosses take mains as their first expansion instead of their naturals and just build sentries at the ramp and endlessly force field and control that space? So part of what I was thinking is instead of making new units, instead of just being like, yeah, lurkers, let's just, let's just give Zerg tier one lurkers. That'll be awesome. <laughs> just throw those in the mix. Instead of doing that, why not adjust the maps, make them, the, the, the spaces tighter, or make the maps larger, or make the units relative to the terrain larger? And what, what's, what's some of what happened in the podcast that made it go for two and one half hours? Well, I mean, that, that there was a lot of, I mean, obviously, we have to touch on the ZBT uh, People out Obviously. there, that's that's like the big thing right now on forums. I, I don't. Do you want to talk about that? I don't really. I think you can go read forums and talk about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If if I'm ever in the mood to be bummed out, I go on and read some forum discussions about balance. That yeah, always yeah. that always burns a hole in my soul. Because here's the thing, I I would absolutely argue that it is too soon to claim whether one yeah. race is the best or the worst. For sure. But I don't like playing Zerg. <laughs> when I play Zerg, yeah. I'm like, I guess I'm going fast gas Zergling. So here, me. yeah, my thought process is I play random. So do you. We sit there. We see a Terran. We're like, okay, uh, we're in. Then you spawn Zerg, and you're just like, why did I choose random? I should have just flipped the coin in real life. <laughs> it's like, oh, Terran or Protoss. Terran or like, oh, Terran or Protoss, yeah. yeah. And, and I think the reason people um, claim that there's this imbalance is... Um, just the evolution of the way the game's going, people are using a lot more of the unit 
to beat the other unit as opposed yeah. to the unit composition? Um, I, I guess I'd call it the the mechanics, the fundamentals to beat right. the unit. I mean, for instance, imagine a Terran player who has three bases against a Protoss who has one base, and this Terran's only making Marauders. I don't care what that one basing Protoss player is going to make, he's going to lose. He's going to lose. I mean, yeah, what about Void Rays? Yeah, then, okay, you make some, <laughs> make some Marines or something like that. But again, I don't care how many Immortals there are out, I don't care how many Colossi are out. Three base economy against Immortals and economy against Colossus, you're going to win with a lot of Marauders. Right. You could do the unit counter and get the, 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 the Vikings to shoot down the, the Colossus, but yeah. I mean, I don't really know if that's the correct way to go, be going about things now. So in Zerg vs. Terran, when people suddenly don't have these unit counters to fall back on, they start to feel kind of like, oh, there aren't any solutions. When really the solutions are that you need to have good control, yeah. or that you need to be squeezing in drones every now and again. You know, what's the counter to Reapers? Making sure you get enough drones. Like that is, and that's weird to say. You know, Noni vs. Jetty looked like that. Jetty wasn't getting enough drones. Yeah, yeah, I mean, honestly, I, we, we talk about this a lot where any Zerg player who considers himself a good Zerg player yeah. knows any self-respect. Yeah, he, he knows exactly <laughs> when to power drones. Yes. You look at someone absolutely. like Idra. Ooh. Idra is mm. I mean, he's the best at that. Yeah, he's, he's You go and watch any replay of his, he makes drones at the exact it's, best it's time no matter what. Like every time. Later on in the game, he'll just have like 95 drones. Yeah, and, and his opponent has like eight, you know? Yeah, I was talking to Natagast, who actually trained with him uh, earlier in the beta. Yeah, yeah. And he just couldn't understand how Idra was able to keep up in the drones. He would have more mm -hmm. drones than SCVs that he had and mine more, yeah. even with the mules. It's, 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 so basically, it's what absurd. we're saying is ZVT imbalance? No. Be your Idra. Be like Idra. Yeah, yeah. Cause it's <laughs> kind of funny to think about the way that StarCraft One has been evolving. Because really, in that game, people just sort of say it's balanced. It's fine. The game's great. Right. And that's like universally agreed upon, with one exception of Protosses who are around C minus on Icy Cup. <laughs> they complain about Zerg like a lot. There's still threads yeah, like there's that. There's still. Oh man. <laughs> but, but thank God StarCraft Two came out because now it's Zerg versus Terran SC Two threads instead of ZBDP Indeed. Brood War threads. But I mean, how do you beat a Zerg? as Terran. Well, the Zerg player has amazing mutilus control and is picking off everything, so unless you are fantastic at pulling your Marines back, not letting the edges get sort of separated, because then you'll lose Marines at the fringes, it's about controlling those Marines. That is what is hard about that matchup. Again, it is control. It's fundamentals. It's not these unit counters. So I think that Zerg versus Terran, even though people are freaking out, I think it's good for the game to force Zergs to push it and try to use control, macro, good timing, as opposed to these direct unit counters. Yeah, really, I mean, y you mentioned something earlier, and I think a lot of people tend to forget that today is, what, the 27th? StarCraft II released exactly 30 days ago. Ooh, and we're already crying about like the fact that imbalance. It's like it's yeah, yeah. So that, of course, yeah. But I mean, 30 days. It's cut, it, it took how long for Starcraft Boudoir to actually be quote unquote balanced? The air quotes. You can see this on the stream. <laughs> and, and now we're already we, we give it 30 days, and the game's supposed to be like perfect. I get it, Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I uh, I have 25 posts on TeamLiquid.net. You know, I get it, and I think that that is. I suppose you have a right to argue that, but you're, you're going to be a sad person. <laughs> I worry about people who are just like, excuse me, I'm a, I'm a yeah. rank 15 so gold player, and the only reason I'm not in platinum, or diamond for that matter, is because of the Zerg vs. Terran balance. Yeah, my advice, spend less time complaining about that and go play more and yeah. actually try to improve. <laughs> These posts are so <laughs> articulate. Yeah. They spent like 45 minutes getting the best word choices, yeah, yeah. bullet points. It's like color-coded. <laughs> and it's like you could have played eight games during exactly. that period of time. Exactly. So, so it looks like we are going to cut to a commercial break. We'll definitely be back with more matches later tonight, but we'll be right back actually after this commercial. Are you ready for some football? Madden NFL 11 takes the field. Halo Reach is almost here. We'll take a look back at the ultimate Halo 3 Top 10. And the host of Live on 3, DJ Wheat, will stop by to discuss StarCraft 2. Wipe off the Dorito dust and give yourself a high five. It's time for the Old Spice Report. Gets the ball away. At the 30, to the 20. To the 10. 
Touchdown! Oh, yeah, buddy! Touchdown, Touchdown Cowboys! <laughs> That's right. Welcome to the second edition of the all-new Old Spice Report. I'm Shibby. And I'm Chris Puckett. And that highlight was from last year's Madden NFL champion, Problem. That's right. You guys picked a great night to check us out. Puckett, in this show, we've got it stacked with tons of awesome visitors. Yeah, basically, if they're sweet, they're going to be on the show tonight. That's right. We got Killer KC. He's coming in. He'll be talking about Madden NFL 11 and Halo Forge. Zach Mazzotta is going to come on to show off his brand new Astro 830 headphones. You know, and plus DJ Wheat, the host of Live on 3, he'll be joining us later to answer your questions about StarCraft 2. And guys, now is your chance to get in on the action. That's right, boys and girls. If you have any questions for DJ Wheat, email them right now to oldspicereport at mlgpro.com. If your questions give us a brain tickle, we might use it later on in the show. I love brain tickles. It feels so good. <laughs> All right, well, while we wait for your questions to come in, it's time for the scope out. Here we go, guys. Madden NFL hit the store shelves on Tuesday, and it only took me about 17 seconds to score on our intern, Killer Orange. He sucks at video games. But, guys, seriously, this franchise has been around since 1989, Burn. which is just ridiculous. I was three years old when the original came out. I remember. Yeah, exactly. And since then, <laughs> the game has sold 85 million copies, which is about $3 billion in EA's pockets. No big deal. You know, I have to say, though, dollars. Shibby. Yeah, exactly. I have to say, though, this game is awesome. I've been playing it all week. And uh, go pick it up. Definitely worth your 60 bucks. Yeah, I, def I can't wait to take the Browns to the Super Bowl. That's a poop joke. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. Ninja Gaiden creator Tope Tome Nobu, Tome Nobu Itagaki is good at a lot of things, but apparently being modest is not one of them. After joining forces with THQ to create Devil's Third, Itagaki, he didn't waste any time as referring to this as the greatest game ever. I mean, this game isn't even set to release until 2012, and he's already calling it the best game ever. Wait a second, though. Didn't he already make the best game over? And of course, we're talking about Dead or Alive Beach Volleyball Extreme 2. Ah, yes, the Extreme Beach Volleyball game that allowed you to choose from a bevy of buxom beauties to bump, set, and spike your way to victory. That game had everything. Yeah, dude. Oh, man, never has a game ever managed to degrade both women and beach volleyball at the same time. <laughs> pretty safe to say that Devil's Third has a pretty big brawl to fill. That is very true. <laughs> I'm hilarious. All right, guys, Activision just released a video trailer for Call of Duty Black Ops, and although the game doesn't drop until November 9th, the one-minute video provides a sneak peek at the multiplayer mode as well as theater mode, and, of course, we get a new look at all the ways to injure your opponents or kill them in the case of the crossbow, <laughs> ballistic knife, and RC car. Shiva, you got to be pretty excited about the ballistic knife. Yeah, you said ballistic knife, right? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. If you add a scope to that thing... It's like the ultimate weapon right there. The, the knifer rifle. The knifer rifle. Seriously, he's uh, yeah. been talking about this weapon for I years. Really, I, seriously, for the like last two years, all I want is a sniper rifle that shoots knives in a video game. Close enough. I'll take it. All right. So now it's time to hear from you guys. Itagaki called Devil's Third the best game ever, but we want to hear from you. Go on to Twitter and let us know what is the best game ever and why. If we decide your tweet is the best, you'll win one of our gorgeous Hot Topic MLG t-shirts available now in Hot Topic stores around the country. That's right. Show us your tweets. Win a free t-shirt. We'll read the best ones after the break. Welcome back to the Old Spice Report. Everyone gather around. It's time for some show and tell. Welcome to Show and Tell, guys. Right now, we're joined by MLG's own Zach Mazzotta. I can pronounce your name. I'm like Itagaki or whatever. And guys, Zach is here to show off his brand new headset. Zach, what do you got for us today? Got the uh, Astro A30s. And uh, earlier this year, Complex Magazine magazine named them the the seventh best gadget of the year. Seventh best that's gadget cool. of the year. That's pretty solid. Yeah, so, pretty what makes these so awesome? Well, guys, these are the first ever cross gaming headsets. So, like, what does that mean? Well, they're designed to go from your Xbox 360 to your PS3 to your PC to your MP3 player to your phone with maximum flexibility. So you don't ever take them off? I sleep with these. I would too. Yeah. That's freaking awesome. Now, Zach, I saw <laughs> you actually walking around with your headphones plugged into your iPhone. What's going on there? I did. So, like, besides the uh, the gaming 